what book? Begin in First Peter chapter one, verses thirteen. First Peter chapter one, verse thirteen. Find these words words recorded. Wherefore gird up the arms of your mind, be sober the hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which have called you is holy. Somebody shout holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit into unfringed love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. I'm going to talk from part nine of this series. I want to talk from the thought a holy church. A holy church. For many churches, especially in America, this word or thought of being holy is something of the mere past. When we think of holiness, our minds tend to revert back to images of revival meetings, gospel trios, and old-time religion, along with stern restrictions on things such as such as drinking, dancing, playing cards, or even watching TV or going to the movies and viewing content that is quote-unquote not in line with biblical teaching. And if we are honest and transparent, many churches are comfortable with leaving these notions in the past. Even in the era of techno-savvy megachurches and postmodern emerging churches, Holiness, when it's discussed at all, is often associated with moral behavior such as sexual purity, financial honesty, and commitment to private prayer. And while we cast off old legalistic notions of holiness, we merely replace them with private moralistic notions. We act as if holiness were either outdated or something that characterized only a small, if important part of our lives. And this is partly due to the quest of cultural relevance, which is defended in the name of winning others to Christ. And if we talked about holiness with unbelievers, if we talked about holiness to them. Many believe that it will cause another hurdle for them to overcome on their way to Christ. Because of this, many of our churches are now compromising biblical standards in an effort to fill pews and not save souls. One writer states that Many self-described Christians march in moral lockstep with mainstream America culture and practices of divorce, spousal abuse, extramarital sex, 
materialism, and racism, just to name a few, while we tip our cap to the importance of holiness. Many in our, in our culture don't view us as morally different in any meaningful way except to see us as hypocrites. And holiness is not just for advanced Christians, but stands at the beginning and center of God's call on all of our lives. The biblical word holy describes the contemporary word different. A holy church is not an odd church, but a different church. Can I say it again? A holy church is not an odd church, but a different church. A holy church has a quality about its life that is unique. Their present lifestyle is not only changed from past lifestyle, but is set apart from the lifestyles of unbelievers around them. In other words, a holy church takes on the characteristics of Jesus Christ. They understand that we have not just been set apart to produce more programs and social events, but we have been set apart to invite the unholy into this lifestyle of holiness. Believers in Christ have been called to live this unique life and different lifestyle. Peter wrote it in the text. He says, but as, in verse 15 and 16, 16, but as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy. One translation says, in all your conduct, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. And here it is, the word called actually may be too much of a passive word. The reality is we have been commanded to live a holy life before God. It is not an option for believers. And when we become saved, it becomes a part of our spiritual DNA. Let, let me try to prove it to you over there in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Uh, we, we, we see this. Uh, description of holiness as a part of our DNA. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, Paul says, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. In other words, before we was, our pursuit of holiness was already built in us. And so it is not an option. We can't choose this thing. There are a lot of things in life that God allows us to choose. We can choose a married life or a single life. We can choose what job we want. We can choose the house that we want to live in. But, but it's not left up to us to choose whether or not we want to be holy. In other words, holiness in church and in our individual lives is not an option. It's mandatory. And so in pursuit of being a holy church, there are a few tensions that we face in this pursuit. The first tension that we face here uh, is the problem with being different. I, I can remember, I can remember um, approximately a, a year into my first pastorate, um, we finally had one of those services that every church and pastor longs for. It was a service that was filled with the power of God. And mostly everyone left the service feeling uplifted. There was no dry eyes in the place. It was one of those services that you didn't want to leave after the benediction was given. Uh, but soon after the service, one of the founding members asked to speak to me after church. It always got to be one. Uh, and, and she said, she said, Brother Pastor, she said, uh, I know you've been here for a couple of months. She said, I like you a whole lot. She said, you're a good young man. She said, but what I don't like is the fact that you are trying to change us into a holiness church. And she said this. She said, this holiness thing is a little bit too much.
much for me. And I respectfully asked her, I said, what did I do or what did she feel like I did uh, to make her feel the way that she felt? What did I do or say to make her feel like I was changing the church into a holiness church? She could not tell me what I was doing. She never mentioned that the music was different. She never said that the preaching wasn't impactful. She simply replied to me in these words that it just feels different. And I realize at that point the problem with many churches is that we don't want to be different. And the reason we don't want to be different is because we value conformity. We, we, we don't want to stand out from the crowd. And now because we are trying to compete with a culture, a changing culture, we wear the same uh, style of clothes. We talk the latest slang. We conform to the end things. And, and the sad part is we fear being different more than we fear God. Can I say it again? We fear being different more than we fear the things of God. We don't want to be perceived by the world as being odd and out of place. And so what has happened is we have become an assembly line society because we are terrified of being set apart. But look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. I know this is not popular, but, but it's going to help you all today. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. How am I doing, Sister Martha? All right. Here it is. Here it is, if I can help somebody here. When you are saved, you don't mind being different. Because you understand in your salvation, you are a part of the royal family. And so Peter says it like this in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 in the NIV version. It says, but you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. In other words, you can't be holy and hellish at the same time. Matter of fact, you got to get a resolve in your mind like Paul had in his mind in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, I'm not letting the world conform me, but I'm set apart to conform the world. To go. What go? My brother. My sister. You better. Jump on board. Where I am now is way 